Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Desiree Alexander, and I'm very happy to be here with you at EdChange Global. And I am going to talk, and we are going to talk today about Google Forms and taking it to the next level. So it's not just a normal or basic Google Forms class. Um, I'm really taking um, taking a look at Google Forms and showing you awesome things that you can do with it that's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit of a deep dive into Google Forms. So we're just gonna hop right in. My website, and excuse my voice, I've been at three conferences this week, so my voice is a little shaky right now. Um, but my website is educatoralexander.com. So you can find a lot of resources there, um, webinars and all kinds of handouts and goodies like that. So um, this is the bit.ly. So you wanna take a picture of your screen or you want to go ahead and jot this down right quick, this bit.ly will lead you to a Google form that's already set up for you so you can play with it. So the stuff that I'm going to be doing, if you have a second screen or you're working on um, a, different, a different device, you can actually pull this form up and work with me because I like to, it to be interactive. If you don't, if you're not able to do that, you may want to jot this down and use it later. So make sure that you have this bit.ly, bit.ly slash G forms with an S level two. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, and on Twitter, I'm at Educator Alex. On all other social media, I am at Educator Alexander. So just a little bit about me. I am the Regional Director of North Louisiana for the Associated Professional Educators of Louisiana which is an educational nonprofit in Louisiana. And I'm the founder consulting of Educator Alexander Consulting. So I'm not gonna go through the rest of this, but just if you ever need any help with Google or classroom management or educational leadership or anything like that, definitely reach out. There's so many resources on our website that are completely free. Go check it out, use it. On here for this lesson, if you have any questions, just unmute your mic and ask. This is very laid back. It's not about me, it's about you. So any questions, just unmute, ask, and I will try to answer it to the best of my ability. And I do have um, a comment section on my website. So if you want to leave a comment after this, awesome. And of course, at Change Global has an, um, a survey about all the sessions that you are going to go to. This is my contact information, educatoralexander at gmail.com. I also have a phone number. All of that, again, is on my website. So if you need to contact me, guys, just email me. I will get back with you. If I have it, it's yours. All right. So let's hop on to our Google form and start playing with it. Wrong account. This is the right account. So we're going to hop onto our Google form and start playing with it. So I have made a copy of the form that if you have pulled it up, you're looking at the exact same form. So I want to show you some stuff that you can do with it. First, I want to show you how to put a password on the form. So some teachers like to put passwords on forms for various reasons. One reason is if you assign your quizzes through, let's say, Google Oh, you know, we have a question? I think somebody might have just joined us. Okay, if you have any questions, just unmute. I'm gonna hear it. I can, I can answer it. Okay, so a lot of people, uh, some teachers like to put passwords on forms so they can um, manage students who are absent. So what I mean by that is if you assign a quiz to Google Classroom, of course, all of you students can log on and take that quiz. A lot of teachers, what they like to do is put a password on the form so the students cannot start the quiz until they want them to start the quiz. So let's say first period comes in, I'm gonna say, hey guys, the password is orange. They put in the password, they can start it. What I'm gonna do at that time is I'm gonna go and change the password to yellow so if a student is absent, they cannot get into the quiz from home, okay? So how do you do that? How do you put a password on the form? And again, this class is not a form, it's basic. So it's assuming that you already know something. Do I have any questions? No questions? Okay. So how do you put a password on the form? So notice I have made a question and I've made a short answer question. 
Next thing I want to do is make it required. So I'm going to make it required because if it's not required, I can just pass it, just pass through it, right? So the next thing I want to do is to make this a section by itself. Because if I just leave it like this and it's a password, all they have to do is scroll down to see the rest of the quiz, right? So I need to make this a section by itself. You may want to think of sections as pages, okay? So how I do that is I come here and I hit the little, this is not an equal sign, but I call it the equal sign. You come here and hit the equal sign, and what that's going to do is make this a section by itself. And if you're working with me, you can be clicking this as you go. If you came in late, I gave everybody a bit.ly. Just remind me at the end and I can make sure that you get it. So last thing I need to do to create a password is I'm actually going to come here and I'm going to come to the hot dogs, so the three little dots, and I'm going to say response validation. Response validation is a really cool tool because what you can do with response validation is tell Google, hey, I'm looking for a certain type of response and I need you to validate it before you let people move on. For example, if I was asking for your email, I may say text contains an email address and what's going to happen is if they don't put that little at symbol, it's not going to accept it. Another thing you can use for response validation is I can put length and I can say I don't want more than 500 characters. Or you can say I don't want less than a certain amount of characters. And then while they're typing in, if they go over or if they don't meet that criteria, it's going to give them a warning. So going back to the password, what you would do is you would come here and you can use number, you can use regular expression. I'm going to say I want my regular expression to match, and then I'm gonna put the password right here. So I'm gonna say I want my password to be red. Custom error text, that's where if you wanna give them a hint, so for example, if they're trying to come up with the password themselves, you can say, remember Lincoln's birthday, or something like that. Um, you can put pretty much whatever you want to right here. Uh, I'm gonna say try again. So that will tell them, hey, I'm not there yet. So when I go and look at this, this is my password. Notice that it's required, so they can't just click next, right? And then as soon as they start typing, it's going to give them that clue. Notice try again is right here. Even if they start typing in the right password, it's going to say try again until they actually get the entire password. So that's what I like about this. They can't just sit there and try to guess it. Another thing about password is it's case sensitive. So if I put capital R-E-D, it's not going to accept it because I said my password was lowercase R-E-D. So it is case sensitive. A teacher tip is to tell your students that your passwords will always be lowercase. Even if it's a proper noun or anything like that, it's always lowercase. And that way you just save yourself a lot of headaches. So if the student, let's say they try, it's not going to let them through, but if they put the right password, ta-da, now they're ready to go. Another reason teachers like this, this little thing is at the top, so I can't get rid of this. Um, another thing, they, the, another reason teachers like this is you can use um, digital breakout. So if you ever heard of breakout edu, um, or if you don't know what that is, if you've heard of an escape room, you can create an escape room or breakout EDU digitally. So now I can put questions, I can put passwords all throughout my form, and the students have to figure stuff out to move on, to break out. All right, any questions about putting a password on the form? I get so excited about this, y'all. Okay, because it's so, it's super cool tools. All right, so, Next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to actually get off of the form and show you templates. So when you come to your Google Drive and you go to Google Forms, if you just click on Google Forms, of course, you're going to open up a brand new form. But if you come here to the little arrow, you have blank form and from a template. If you click from a template and you click general, and these are the templates that you can use. So if you need a quick course evaluation, there you go. If you need a quick event registration, there you go. Um, they even have exit tickets on here. So if you need just a quick form and you may just want to like add one question to it, 
it's already set up, it's already ready to go. You just click on it and it's going to open for you and you can go to town and have fun. Okay, so now this is actually saved in my Google Drive. Okay, so another thing you can do with templates, this is only for school accounts what I'm about to show you. The regular templates is for everybody. But notice how I have Educator Alexander Consulting right here because that's my school account, my business account. So if you're on your school account, you're going to see your school right here. The cool thing about this is you can create a template and share it with your entire district. What? I know. So if somebody is like, I really love that observation form you made, you know, I want you to share it with everybody. You can just put it here and everyone in your district can get it. No, you cannot only share it with your school or anything like that using this. This is for the entire district. So what you would do to do this is you would go and create your form, create that awesome form that you want to create, and then you come here and you hit Submit Template. You select the form, whatever the form may be. It's only going to show you forms. So I'm going to just click one of these. And you want to click Submit a Copy because you don't want to submit your original file. So you want to submit a copy so they can just make all the copies they want. You can title it what you want to, and you do have to pick a category. So I'm just going to click basics. You can click whatever you want to, and I'm going to hit submit. So once I do that, this form is going to be on here for everyone to see. All they would have to do is come and click it, and sometimes it does make me refresh. Um, you, gotta, you can come here and click it, and then they can use the form. If you ever want to get rid of it, like maybe your district made you mad, um, you can always come here and hit the hot dogs right here, and you can hit remove from gallery. So now that template is no longer available to the rest of the school district. There you go. All right. So that is how you use templates. Any questions so far? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make the name section. Um, the reason why you would do this is if you have used Google Forms as a quiz before, and I'm going to show you how to do that right quick, but if you have done it before, you know that if you use the shuffle question option, um, it will also shuffle name. So if you put first name, last name, and then, you know, what's your favorite color and all this other stuff, and you shuffle it so... If I'm taking the quiz, I, the questions are not in the same order as Mary. Well, it also shuffles name. So name may be like question number 30, right? Um, which is sometimes good. You know, you're giving them, you're, you're giving them some help. Um, can you share the bit URL? Okay, yeah. I was going to share it again at the end, but let's, um, all right, so this is the bit.ly right quick. This, this doesn't need to be here. Um, that's, the, that's the bit.ly. So just jot it down right quick or take a picture of your screen. We're going to do a little quick dance break. Hopefully you're dancing with me. Don't leave me dancing by myself. Yeah. You don't have to have music. The music is in your soul. All right. So hopefully you have the bit.ly. <laughs> um, I think, let's see. No problem. Ow. All right. So. Making a section by your side. You can work with me. That's why I love the Bentley. Um, okay. So, and I'm going to share it at the end too because I know people are coming and going. So, making name a section by itself. So, what you're going to do is you're going to put, of course, name or first name and last name, however you want to do that. And then what you want to do is use this equal sign again, even though it's not an equal sign. And you want to make it a section by itself. So, notice it's in a section by itself up here. I'm going to hit this, ta-da. When I come up here to preview it, of course I need to put my password in. And now name is a section by itself. So a couple of things of why this is important. If I, now I didn't make it required, but of course you're gonna make name required. So one good thing is they can't move on without putting their name right? Because some students, they just jump into the quiz, and then they, even on the electronic form, they forget to put their name. So this forces them to put their name. Another cool thing, again, is if you use the shuffle feature, what Google Forms does is it shuffles within each section. So that means that in this section, is it, some students may see last name first, some of them may see first name first, but that's all that's going to be shuffled. All right. 
right. So um, with anytime you create, uh, I closed the wrong window. That's fine. Anytime you create um, a section, you're going to see this big, ugly, untitled section come up. Please delete that. If you want to add something there, help yourself, but definitely delete it because it's not a cute look. Okay, you see this big, every time you create a section, untitled section is in the, you know, it comes up. So please delete that. Any questions before we talk about copying a list? All right. Okay. I don't see any mics unmuting. I don't see any thing happening. Copying a list. So if you have a multiple choice question, like I have a question of which one of these is the best. I have my, you know, my answer to that, but I'll keep it to myself. So if you have a list, for example, this list of states, right? What you're going to do is copy, and you're gonna come here to where it says option one. Ta-da! You don't have to type all that in. You can just copy and paste it, and it's actually going to do it for you. So if you do go to a website that has like maybe a bulleted list, you may want to copy into a, a Google Doc or a Word document and take off the bullets and then copy and paste it into there. Um, let's see if it lets me copy two rows. Oh, well, three, I guess, or whatever. Um, let's see if it lets me do that and if it looks okay. What? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. All right. So you don't have to type all that stuff in. Copy and paste it. All right. Now I'm going to make that a section and move on. How do I make it a quiz? How do I use the quiz feature? And what are some little options or little tips and tricks? That little window is annoying. Um, the little tips and tricks that you can use. So let's get into making a quiz. Any questions, guys, please stop me. Okay, because I'm just kind of rocking. I, I can't even see myself. I can't see you. So I'm just kind of rocking and rolling. All right, making a quiz. When you want to make your Google form a quiz, you just do the form like normal. So you just put all your questions, you're typing, you're rocking and rolling, you're copying and pasting answers, you're good. When you're ready to actually make it a quiz, you're going to scroll all the way to the top and you're going to go to the gear. You're going to go to quest quizzes, sorry. Ta-da! You're done. You have made it a quiz. Now, of course, we probably want it to be a self-grading quiz, right? Which means you want Google to grade it for you. So we have a couple of more things we need to do if we want to do that. So when I clicked make it a quiz, it just transformed it to a quiz. So notice you have when do you want to release the grade? Immediately or later? And then you have can your students, responding student, can your students see missed questions, correct answers, or point values? That is your personal decision. Do you want them to see how many points a question is worth? Do you want them to see the correct answers? And do you want them to see what questions they missed? Here are some teacher tips. If you are in the situation, just completely hypothetical, that you're giving the quiz Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Thursday, you want to go over all the answers with your students. So this is the best practice to do that. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you're going to say release the grade later, and you're going to uncheck missed questions and correct answers. Just a best practice. You do what you want to, okay? But best practice is if you're taking the quiz Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, say release the grade later, and the respondent can see only point values, unless you don't want them to see that either. Why do you do that? You're going to do that so if you give a quiz first period, by seventh period, all of the answers are, are there, right? Because if I'm a student and I can see the correct answers and the questions I missed, then I know the entire test. So that is why, and again, this is personal preference, but it's, it is best practice. So on Thursday, I gave the quiz out on Google Classroom, right? When the, the student turns in the quiz, that's it. On Thursday morning, what I'm going to do as the teacher is I'm going to come back here to this quiz, click on the gear, and I'm going to change this to immediate and turn these on and click save. When I do that, automatically, 
when that student goes back to Google Classroom and clicks on that link that they already clicked on, they're going to have a little box there that says view score. So now they can actually go on, see their score, they can see what they missed, they can see what they got right. Done. You don't have to put anything back out, that's all you have to do, save it, and now they can see everything. Okay. So I'm here, yeah, go ahead, questions. Her phone's messed up, so she's between cell phones right now, mm -hmm. and they went out of town to Glen Rose. Do we have any questions? That Saturday, so they went to Glen Rose, and when they got back, the air conditioner had gone out, so while they were getting that fixed, they were staying over at Blanca's house. So she just happened by us today when she was going to do something else. She looked and saw it. Erica? I called the home phone mm -hmm. and said, this phone number's not been set up for to receive voicemail. I told her that too. I was like, yeah, call, but I couldn't leave a message. Hello, Erica? Look at the sweet girl. Oh, let's see. Can I meet Mark me today? Hello, Erica? What? Can you mute? What? Is this Erica? Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Can you mute? Thanks. I'm sorry. I thought I muted. No problem. Okay. So we got a good conversation. That's okay. All right. So um, that's how you, that's what you would do for best practices for that. All right. So once you have set that up the way you want to, you're going to go back to your quiz. And now I want to choose the correct answers. So Excuse me, let's go back to that section that I created. Okay, so this form is a quiz. Notice these are my multiple choice check boxes and short answer. Google, of course, does not grade your essay questions. You have to do that yourself, but I will show you a little easier way to do that. So on my check boxes, oh, I didn't press save. You see that the conversation threw me, I was, I was enthralled. Okay, all right, so, now notice because i made it a quiz i now have a spot that's called answer key so if i click that now i can click and choose what my answer what the correct answer is i can also put a point value right here okay so with the correct answer we all know because we're, we're not forms basics so we know that for check boxes you can you, the student can have multiple correct answers and for multiple choice, the student can have one correct answer. Let's see, let's get this question. Like these updates. Awesome. All right, so for check boxes, um, students can have, of course, um, multiple correct answers, and for multiple choice, they can have one. However, when you are doing your answer key, okay, Notice that this is a multiple choice, so the student can only have one correct answer. When I'm doing my answer key, I can tell Google to mark multiple ones correct. So that means, let's say I taught something and, oh, I know that they keep getting A and C mixed up. I know I need to reteach that. So what I may want to do is to say, you know what, if they choose A or C, go ahead and give it to them correct. So the student side, they're still only marking one answer. But on the teacher side, you're saying, go ahead and mark A and C right. If they mark A, put it right. If they mark C, put it right. On check boxes, if I click A and C, what I'm telling the computer, because the students can pick multiple correct answers, I'm telling the computer that they have to pick A and C to get it right. So if they put A, it is wrong. If they pick C, it is wrong. They have to pick A and C. So hopefully I'm making sense. So multiple choice, remember they can only have one correct answer. So if you choose multiple, you're saying or. Check boxes, if you choose multiple, you're saying and. They have to have all of these. So all that means is on your end, you need to make sure you know what you're marking answers for, okay? Notice you have the little edit, um, I'm sorry, add answer feedback. This is completely up to you. Per question, if you click that, you can give them some feedback if they get it wrong or if they get it right. Of course, they're only going to see that if you actually turn on 
um, that they can see the correct answers. So let's say if they get it wrong, I can say, you know, better luck next time, or you can do it, or I can put a, a link to a YouTube video, or I can put a link to, you know, the hang in there with the cat meme or whatever, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and if they get it correct, you can do the same thing. And then, last but not least for quizzes, is the um, constructive response short answer. So with this one, when you click answer key, you can actually type in what you want the answer to be. This is case sensitive, and this has to be exactly how you type it. So let's say the answer is red. I'm going to put, I'm going to put R-E-D, I'm going to put capital R-E-D, I'm going to put all caps, I'm going to put R-E-A-D, 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 however I think they can spell that word. Now, of course, our babies will always surprise you, right? They'll put that Y in red and you're like, why? So, you know, as many ways that you can spell it will help you out because then Google can grade it without you going and having to add a point to their grade, okay? So that is how you would do the constructed response or the short answer, I should say. For your paragraph answers, when you go to responses and you actually have a response, let me go ahead and do a quick response. Let, uh, yeah, blah, blah, and blah, blah. Okay, good enough. I made all these sections. Submit. All right. Oh, um, great. Submit. All right. <clears throat> so when I go and I have a response, because you have made this a quiz, you have this question. You know, you don't have that unless you've made it a quiz. So now I see the word question. If you click on that, you can go through all of your questions. This is question number one. I can go to question number two, question number three, question number four. But the cool thing about this is if you have paragraphs, you're going to see all of your students' paragraphs. Of course, I only did one response, but it'll be a paragraph right here, it'll be a paragraph right here, it'll be a paragraph right here. And then you can actually come here and put the grade for the paragraph. So you don't have to re try to read the paragraphs on your Google Sheet or do whatever else you used to do. You can just come down here and just scroll down and put a grade for your paragraphs. Now, the, uh, another cool thing that I like about it is you're not going to see who wrote what paragraph. So it actually helps you grade. Now, if you know if you have Johnny and you know you have to give Johnny some extra points, then you can go back and do that, right? But it helps you be more subjective when you, um, subjective object, when you are doing your, um, doing your grading. So that's your teacher tip for that. All right, couple of more teacher tips for using Google Forms with Google Classroom. So if you're on Google Classroom and you're using your Google Form, and I'll just use whatever classroom pops up here. There I go. All right, so, oh no, that's two in a row. There you go. All right, so if you're using it and you're creating an assignment, what you want to do to put your Google Form on your Google Classroom is don't use the link. A lot of us like to go and use the link and put the link in here. You're actually going to come here to your Google Drive and put it in like you're adding a file. And I promise you that the students will not get the file to edit. They're just going to get the quiz. So if I come here and let's use quizzes for classroom. You'll know if you made the form a quiz if you see this little button called Great Importing. So what that does is it will take all the grades from your spreadsheet and automatically import them into Google Classroom once you click the button. So you'll click the button called Grade Importing and it'll take all those grades from your spreadsheet and import them into Google Classroom. If you put a Google Form on here the way that I just showed you how to do it and you don't see this Grade Importing button, that means your form is not a quiz. So you just need to go back to your Google form and make it a quiz. Another thing with this is if you add anything to this box, I don't care if it's a quiz, I don't care. If you add anything to this box, notice great importing goes away. So it has to be the only thing in that assignment. The form has to be by itself if you want to use great importing. Okay. Another tip. I've had people ask me, okay, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing the Google Forms, 
and um, ask quizzes. Oh, let's see. I have a chat question. I like to get to your questions as we go because. So, oh, cool. Awesome. So, um, oh, I hear noise. Does anybody have a question? It's not me. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's not me this time. Okay. So, um, so if you have a question, just unmute your mic, talk it, we'll talk it out. Um, or you can, of course, put it in the chat box. If you came in late, make sure to stay till the end if you can, so I can give you the bit.ly and you can get this form so you can play with. Um, it was me. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. All right. No problem at all. All right. So, uh, another teacher tip with forms. So I have teachers that have asked me, okay, so I gave this Google form as a quiz, but my students don't finish. What do I do? So I have a solution, but you have to, you have to see if the solution works for you or not. So I can answer more of an extended time type of question. So if you have 25 students that get regular time, and then you have five students who get extended time, what you would do is you would make your Google form, make it a quiz, it's lovely, it's super awesome, and you're gonna make a copy of that form, right? So you have two quizzes for first period. Now, of course, if you have more than one period, you're gonna have two quizzes for first period, two for second, two for third, two for, so you're gonna wind up with 25 quizzes, but that's okay, you, you do what you need to do for your babies, right? So you have those two forms for first period. This form, I'm gonna do exactly what Desiree just showed me how to do. I'm done. I'll put it on Google Classroom. I sit in the shade. That's what teachers do, right? I drink a Coke and I relax. All right. So that was sarcastic if you didn't catch that. All right. So for the second group of students, for my five that need extended time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the gear and I am going to click edit after submit. What that's going to do is, on Google Classroom, I'm going to send quiz number one to my 25 babies. This is not a classroom quiz, but if you, class, but if you need to know how to do that, I can show you. So you send it to 25 students, and then you're gonna send this one that you put edit after submit to your five babies. What that's going to do is in Google Classroom, for those 25, once they hit submit, they're done. Peace out. For those five babies, once they hit submit, they will have a button that says edit after submit, which means the next day when they come to class, they can hit that edit after submit button and all of their answers are still there. And then they can just continue taking the quiz from where they left off. Ta-da! Okay. So one of the things you have to think about is if you do the edit after submit, it will, um, they, can, they can do that at home as well. So it just depends on how you want to do that. But oh, I love my teachers. Can they have come up with ways to even solve that using passwords? So you can always do what you want to do, putting tips together, right? So if you put a new password on that form, even though it's added after submit, they can't get to it until they get that password for the second day. And that tip actually came from a teacher in a test, and she's like, what if we do this? And I was like, you're amazing. So there's always ways to get around it, but that's how you can help your students edit after submit. So that's how your, their answers can stay there, but they can continue the quiz. If they all need to continue the quiz, do it for all of them, right? Um, and then you can just go, you can just go to that exact same password question and change the password, right? The one thing you cannot do is take off edit after submit and put it back on. Once you take it off, all of the answers are gonna be gone. Okay, and I've tested all this. So just understand that if you do that, you just erase all of their answers. Now they've submitted it, so you have their answers, but they will no longer see their answers. And you can always tell them, go ahead and start with number 10, and you know, I'll, I'll take, you're, you're gonna be Eddie up here and Eddie down here, and I'll take your answers and put them together, and then I'll grade it. There's always ways around it. And that's what we used to do old school. So, but we don't have to do that anymore. We have edit after submit. Any questions? Those are all your teacher tips. Nope, one more teacher tip. <laughs> There's always one. All right, points. So this is new in Google Forms where it gives you the total points at the top. Because I've had teachers like they'll have calculators and they'll be like, 
is this 100 points? Oh, so it gives you the total points now. So that's, that's always super cool. But if you go under the hot dogs and you go under preferences, something's in my eye, and you go under preferences, you have default quiz point value. You also have make questions required. So if most of the questions you put in a Google form are required, you can click this and then every question you add after that will be required. And then if you want to take it off, of course, you just go and click it. Default quiz point value, you can come here and you can say, hey, most of the questions that I'm going to put on this quiz are five points. Come change this first. And then every question you add will already be five points. I think if you want to change it to three or whatever you can. When you do another quiz tomorrow and that quiz, everything's going to be one point, come change it to one point before you get started. Okay, so use this default quiz point value to your advantage. All right. What? Well, well, I get so excited. I love this stuff, guys. Okay, so that is making a quiz. I'm going to go to um, the part that says this form is a quiz and I'm just making it a section just to get it out the way. And remember, every time you make a section, please delete the big, un ugly, untitled section. So now, we've already talked about putting a form in Classroom. You see, you're so much ahead of the game. So most of the rest of our time, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, most of the rest of our time, we'll be dealing with branching. And then if we have time for that last little part, I'll let you know. All right, so branching. I love branching. So what branching is, is it allows you to go to a to go to another question based on the answer. So you remember those books back in the day, and if you're too young for this, but do you remember those books back in the day where it would be like I'm I'm I'm, I'm okay. Well, I mean I don't even know if I read them, but whatever. I think I was into like Care Bears back then, but still, where you put where you put um, it would say something at the top like, "Do you want to go to the lake or the ocean?" If you want to go to the lake, page three. If you want to go to the ocean, page four. And you're like, yes, the ocean. So that's where branching is. So depending on how you answer a question, it's going to bring you to a different question. So with branching, you no longer have to have students scroll through questions that doesn't relate to them. Okay. Um, you can also, with branching, reteach in the middle of a quiz. There are so many different mind-blowing things you can do with branching. So, for example, if I ask you a question and the student gets the answer wrong, I can lead, okay, I can lead them to a YouTube video, have them watch the video, answer a question on the video. If I want to, I can lead them back to the question to get it right. Or I can just have, teach them and they have them move on because you did get it wrong, but I wanted to teach you why you got it wrong. Whatever. There's so many things you can do with branching. So I'm going to show you how to do it in a second. Let's look at our chat question. Does Google Form work on iPad? Submit another response. Will not work for me on submit another response. Oh, I have no clue why that's not working for you on an iPad because I've definitely used submit another response on an iPad before. Um, so, oh wait, was that a, I'm sorry if that was a private, oh, it's to everyone. I was like, I'm sorry if that was a private question. Um, I, I have used submitting other response before, so I'm not sure why that wouldn't be working on an iPad. I would have to actually look that up, because sometimes, you know, we're dealing with technology, so sometimes, especially if you go and look it up, and a lot of people are complaining about it, it may be a little glitch. I know I've done it before, for a fact. Um, so I'm not exactly sure, but if you want to email me, I, I look up stuff for people all the time and just kind of try to find a solution for it. You just shoot me an email and it's just educatoralexander at gmail.com. Um, and if you forget that, it's educatoralexander.com. Um, so it's always educator Alexander. Uh, so, okay. A good question. I just don't, I, I've definitely used it on the iPad before. Um, and if anybody in here if you know, like talk, this is us talking. Even if I'm doing all the talk, but it's us talking. All right, branching. People are like, please get to branching. All right, so how do you set up branching? The first thing I want to tell you is people will come back to me sometimes. I'm just looking at the time. Okay, people will come back to me sometimes and say, oh, branching was hard. That's because you tried to branch your whole quiz. Okay, 
Do not do that when you first start. Do one question. Branch one question, see how you like it, and then you can move on. So when you're branching, what you want to do is create your mama question and your baby questions. So you want to, this is my mama question and these are my baby questions. If we want to keep the tree metaphor going, this is my tree and these are my branches. Let's see, I think I had a chat question. I heart, oh, I thought, I, at first I thought I said I hate you. I was like, thanks. <laughs> my heart just kind of went down like, dang, that's the meanest thing I've ever read. Thank you. Hey, hey, I heart you too. Um, yeah, my heart was just like, I'm depressed now. All right, so <laughs> this is my three question and my branches question. I'm so happy that I didn't say hey. Um, so the mama, the babies, the tree, the branches. Just do it like a normal form. Don't start clicking and doing different stuff. Normal form, mama question, baby questions. Okay, first thing you do, that's step one. And I actually have the steps on my website. And I can show you how to get there in a second. So step one, create your questions. Step two is you want to make each one of these questions a section by itself. It needs to be on its own little island. Okay? So notice this is already a section by itself. So I'm pointing at it like you can see. This is a section by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my mama question. And all I'm doing is making it a section. I'm going to baby number one question, making it a section. You see these big, ugly, untitled sections? Remember to delete those. I'm going to the second baby question, making it a section. I'm not doing any kind of magic. That's all I'm doing. Delete the big, ugly. Going to the last question, make it a section. All right, so that was step number two. I'm going to look at my chat. Sorry, not sure what a mama and a baby question is. Why don't you know, Kathy? All right, so what a mama question and a baby question is, or a tree and a branch, is what's your main question? And then if I answer this, I'm going to go to my baby question. If I answer this way, I'm going to go to my baby question. If I answer this way, I'm going to go to my baby question. So, for example, what I want this to look like is how did you like this training? This is my mama question. It was awesome. It was okay. It was horrible. If they answer it was awesome, I must have said, okay, Google. My phone is like, we cannot recognize your voice. If I say it was awesome, I want that to go to my first baby question, which is what did you like about it? Got it. Okay. So I, I use mama and baby, and then I use tree and branches because some stuff works and the other people. So I just use both. So this is my tree, and then it's going to branch Got it. as I tell it to branch. So all I did was make the sections. That's, that's, that was step two. Step one, make my questions. Step two, make each sex, each mama, mama and baby, or tree and branches a, a section by itself. Mm -hmm. Questions so far. All right. I'm gonna go back up to my mama question or my tree the main, the rock, <laughs> well, now I can do a whole bunch of metaphors. So I'm gonna go back up to my main question. And now what I wanna do is I have to tell it where to go. So I'm going to come to my hot dogs and notice this is a multiple choice. You can do this on multiple choice and construct and check boxes. I'm gonna come here to my hot dogs and I'm gonna say go to section based on answer. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Go to a section based on the answer. So I'm going to click that. When I click that, ta-da, notice for each answer choice, I, I think somebody needs to mute unless you have a question. For each answer choice, I now have a continue to what section. How do you know what section is right here? Ta-da. So if I want it was awesome to go to what did you like about it, I'm going to say it was awesome continue to section six. It was okay, continue to section seven. It was horrible, I wanna ask you what made it horrible, and I'm gonna say continue to section eight. Now, if you're doing this on a quiz, you may wanna say, if you get it right, continue with the test. If you get it wrong, I want B, C, and D to go to the YouTube video, mm. right? So it depends on our go-to an article I want them to read right quick. 
So it depends on how you want to loop this. This is your baby. But what I'm going to say is make sure you only do one and test it out and see how you like it first. So I just want you to kind of go. So I just did my third step. Any questions? So it's like mama and babies, right? Because these mm -hmm. are, And so you got to this by clicking on the mama question? Yes. Okay, that's where you find that. That's where I go wrong. And I only have to put the one mother question. And these are all the babies underneath it. I don't have yes. to do main question, baby, mother, baby, mother, baby. No, no, please don't. Right. Got, yeah. Nope. I think it's that's right. Only one mama. <laughs> well, wow. Not in my class. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> and not in every household as well, but no. we're just gonna go. We're just gonna use one. We can only you know use one analogy at a time. So it's only one mama, one daddy, whatever. So right. there you go. Um. So yes. So now what's gonna happen is if they click, it was awesome. It's gonna go there. If it clicks, it's okay. It's gonna go there. If they click, it's hard. What's gonna go there? So we just did step number three. All I did was click here. Go to section based on answer, and I told it where I wanted it to go. Last step. Now, usually at this point, if I was doing this in person, I would go, what do you think's missing? We don't have time for that. Wrong line. I'll just let you know. So the last thing I need to do is, if you think about it, if they answer this, they go out on this branch, and they're just hanging out. If they answer this, they go out on this branch, and they're just hanging out. If they go to this, I know you're wondering, like, what is she going to use? I'm just, I only have two on. So you go out on this branch and you just hang out. Where do they go after they go to the end of the branch? Where do they go? Right? Like, okay, it was awesome. I lead them to what did you like about it? Where do they go after that? That's your fourth and final step for branching. So I told it where to branch. Now I need to tell it where to continue. How do you do that? Ta -da! right in the middle. After section, section six, where do I want this to go? Now you can say, I want it to go back to the mama question so you can get it right. Or you may say, I just want you to continue with the quiz. So I'm going to say, if I scroll down, continuing with my quiz is section nine. So I'm going to say, after section six, I want you to continue to section nine. After section seven, I want you to continue to section nine. And if you hated my session, I just want you to submit. I don't want any more information from you. How about that? All right. So now, anytime you do branching, please check it out. Do not throw out that form not knowing if your branches work. So let's check our branches. If I come up here, I'm going to go ahead and get to my questions. <laughs> I'm going to go to my questions. Please don't screenshot anything I do. I can only imagine. Okay, so I did make this required. You don't, you don't have to. You don't want to, but I made it required. All right, so it was awesome. It was okay. It was horrible. And now I have to sneeze and it's going to come at the most inappropriate time, apparently. All right. <clears throat> okay. I thought it was coming again, but it's not. All right. So thank you. I heard all those blessed hues out there. So how did you like this training? If I say it was awesome, next. What did you like about it? Yay. Next. All right, it went on with the quiz. That one works perfectly. Instead of using your back button up here, please use the back button right here. If you use this one, it's going to take you like to the beginning of the form and it just gets messed up. So use this one and it will um, help you go a little bit faster. It was okay. Next. Why was it just okay? Next. Yay. That one works. Back, back. It was horrible. Mean people. Next. What made it horrible? And remember, I said I didn't want any other information from you. So this one will actually have you submit where I wanted it to submit. So that works as well. Questions. That is branching, guys. You now know how to branch. And on my website, if you go to 
Presentations, Tech Tools, Google. Presentations, Tech Tools, Google. I actually have like a little image right here by Google Tips and Tricks that has Google Forms in it. Um, somebody was like, just write them down, just write down. So I wrote it down for you. There you go. Create the main question in your branching, make a question each section by itself, go to the main question, click the hot dog, go to the, the go to the middle and tell it where to go. Ta-da! That's branching. Four quick steps. What did you say? Where do I find that? On my website, Presentations Tech Tools Google. Presentations Tech Tools Google. Once you click that, you just scroll down and this right here, you just click on it and you can bring it off or whatever you want to do. Let's see, we have a quick chat. Oh no, oh Lord, I don't want to invite anybody. All right, quick chat. I love your webpage. Thank you, Kat. I'll pay you later. Thank you, Kathy. All right, so I have a lot of cool stuff on there, guys. All right, so that is how you branch. You now know how to branch. We have five minutes left. I'm going to show you the very last tip I have for you, and that is using a form again without actually making a copy of it. So we all know that we make copies of forms. And honestly, guys, if you're in the classroom and you're doing a, a quiz for first period and for second period, my, my best friend just came in. So if you see her in the background, she's like, wait, but I was a bestie. All right. So um, you may not have seen her when she was there, but I wanted to give her a shout out. All right. So if you are, do, if you're a classroom teacher and you're actually doing like a quiz for first period and a quiz for second period, this is not for that. Continue to make your copy. You do not have time in between classes to do what I'm about to show you. This is for those quizzes that you use, I mean, I'm sorry, those Google Forms that you use that um, it may be like the bake sale. And you don't need five copies of the bake sale for 2017, 2018, 2019. Or it may be something that you use once a month or a signing sheet or something like that. Let's see, we have a chat question. Okay, good. So, um, Teacher Steel, which she's amazing, Coach Steel is amazing, uh, just sent out the bit.ly for the feedback. So definitely look at that in your chat. Um, so what you can do to very, very quickly, we're our last couple of minutes, um, to reuse the form without actually, what do I wanna say? Without actually making a copy of it. So um, I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna show you one other thing because it's super quick. So if you're doing results, right, usually you will create a new spreadsheet. We all know how to do that. That's a basic level thing. But we also, I want to show you how you can actually get all of your results from different quizzes on the exact same spreadsheet. So don't do what I'm doing. Okay, so I created my first spreadsheet, right? So what I'm going to do, first period, first period, I'm going to create the spreadsheet just like I normally do. Second period, for my second, I'm going to, I made a copy of the form and all that. Second period, I'm going to click here and I'm going to say select existing spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the spreadsheet from first period with all my answers on it. When I do that, look at the magic that happens. These are my first period answers and it creates a tab at the bottom and these are my second period answers. So you can actually have, let's say you have that mitosis quiz. You can have all of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh period, all of their answers on one Google form. But they don't combine them, so you can still have them on different spreadsheets. Last tip. So I, I just did this form. If I wanted to wipe this form out and reuse it, I'm going to unlink the form. What that does is it takes your spreadsheet and it unlinks it from your Google form. You still have your spreadsheet of answers from 2015 there, but it's, it's no longer connected to the form. So you still have your answers for the bake sale or whatever, but it unlinks it. So now this is a fresh form. I also don't want all this data right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click delete all responses. I can reuse this form. I don't have to make 50 copies of this form. I can reuse it, and if I click here, it's gonna create a brand new spreadsheet. That's how you reuse a form. Okay, so we are done. Thank you guys so much for coming. We are ending one minute early. You see how awesome I am? Don't say I never gave you anything. So 
Thank you very much. Hopefully, thank you. Hopefully, you learned something from it. Remember to go fill out the evaluation for Air Change Global. If you want to leave a comment on my website, this is the bit.ly. So for those of you who came in late, this is the bit.ly that you need to get to the form that I created and you can play with it yourself. So definitely take a picture of the screen or write it down. And my website is educatoralexander.com, Twitter at Educator Alex, and all that good stuff. So y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. That's great. Sorry I couldn't cut, do the whole thing. Oh, no, Katie. Bye. Bye.